While Fur Fletcher and Vanessa Doofenshmirtz had a lot stacked against them to become a couple, through the years they were able to learn about themselves, grow as individuals, and eventually take their relationship to a whole new level. And today, I'm going to be explaining how this unique couple came to be. Hello, mm -hmm. I'm Isaac from Watson Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films and Disney shows, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. Sometimes a single mundane moment can transform into a surreal, fantastical, and life-changing occasion in a flash. And this is what happened to Ferb when he first met Vanessa. On a typical summer day in the tri-state area with plans to build the largest ice cream sundae ever, Ferb is tasked to go to Blueprint Heaven to pick up the plans for the giant ice cream maker. At the same time, Vanessa was instructed by her father to retrieve the plans to a space lasinator, and it is here where they first come into contact with one another. For Ferb, seeing Vanessa absolutely took him aback as he plunged into seeing her in a short sequence of colors, flowers, and music, which left him dazed and in the state where he grabbed the wrong plans. What happened back there? I was weak. While Vanessa seems to not think much of the interaction, Fur felt he had met a gorgeous girl of his dreams in an unforgettable fantasy sequence. Ferb couldn't ignore that meeting and was sure that when they met again, he'd impress her, even if she was 16 while he was definitely younger than that. So when Phineas and his baseball launcher knocked Meep out of space and Ferb is tasked to fix and renovate the alien ship, he knew this alien rider from outer space deserved a test drive. Verb ripped across the sky in that ship until he sees Vanessa, backs up, and gives her quite a look, which she seems fairly pleased by. Yo, digging my ride from out of space. <laughs> Vanessa grins and drops her bags by the performance, showing that some part of her appreciated the showcase by Ferb. But the next ride Vanessa will see Ferb in was a bit of a downgrade. When both the Doofenshmirtz and the Fletchers travel to the super duper mega superstore, they pass by one another and to no surprise, Ferb gets lost in her beauty again, but quickly is pulled back out by his family's conversation. At the super duper mega superstore, Vanessa decides that day would be the one to show her father that she could be responsible enough to get her own car. And Doof agrees to consider it if she can get him the super rare element, Pizzazium Infanionite. Vanessa is able to use a tracker to get extremely close to reaching the Pizzazium, but when Ferb sees her and notices Buford and Belgeet coming at a high speed towards her, he leaps into action to save her. Look, thanks for your help, but I can do this on my own, okay? Even though Vanessa didn't desire his assistance, when the Pizzazium gets lost in the back room of the super duper mega superstore, he is ready to mobilize and help this girl. Ferb saves her from falling, jumps after the element, uses his tools to make the journey easier, and backs her up on her solo song on the guitar. But even with Ferb's support, the job to get the Pizzazium doesn't get much easier until it finally falls into a ball pit. Your name is Ferb? Well, yes, it's short for, oh, here it is. Thanks, Ferb, see you around. Vanessa appreciated and acknowledged the work Ferb put into helping her, but she would soon need him in a much more serious way. Even though she had gotten the Pizzazium Infinite, she soon loses it and fights for it again. Only this time, when she gets the drop on the Pizzazium, Vanessa gets caught on the lights she came down on and gets pulled towards a spinning lawnmower. With her calling for Ferb though, he takes action. Ferb uses his intellect and quick thinking to outmatch the lawnmower and saves Vanessa's life, ending a crazy adventure in the super duper, you know, the giant store. Well, Ferb, you certainly know how to show a girl a good time. And he even gets the pizzazium to her father, even though Perry the Platypus foils that plot soon after. Perry the Platypus. Vanessa is still appreciative of Ferb's assistance and the fun they had, regardless of whether she proved how responsible she was throughout the day. And for all of that, she oh, yeah. gives him a kiss Thanks. that blows his mind and shows him that being kind, helpful, and supportive was a way to be a part of Vanessa's life. The next time Vanessa sees Ferb though, he's not helping her, but is just passing by for she's running after her Mary McGuffin doll while Phineas and Ferb are coming to the house of Vanessa's mother to see if she knows anything about Candace's Mary McGuffin doll. They're all just in a crazy search for the same toy. But even though Ferb and Vanessa's encounter was brief, this is the first time Ferb meets Charlene. And pretty soon, Vanessa and Ferb would be able to connect more. 
When Phineas and Ferb decide to have the longest summer day ever, they determine they will travel around the world with their friends at the same speed as the Earth's rotation. At the same time, Vanessa and Dr. Doofenshmirtz are heading to Tokyo to spend time together. But when Vanessa finds out her father is also planning on conducting an evil scheme on their trip, she leaves him, gets knocked off of a building by Doof's contraption, and lands on the Sun Beater 3000. But Ferb? Vanessa? No matter where we go, Ferb knows everyone. Remembering Ferb from their previous encounters, Vanessa joins the friends on their journey back to the tri-state area. Along the way, we see that Vanessa is curious about Ferb. So Candace, what is Ferb short for? And Ferb's continuous ability to save Vanessa with his brilliant mind amazes her. As the group keeps finding new ways to keep their ship traveling as quickly as they can around the world, they eventually reach Paris and they realize they don't know how to get back home. Therefore, Ferb and Vanessa head to the Eiffel Tower to plot directions back home, and it's here where they get a chance to open up to one another. In the city of love. In the city of love on top of the Eiffel Tower, Vanessa talks about how frustrating it is that her father puts his work ahead of her when she only wanted to spend time with him. In hopes of helping her, Ferb gives her some advice from his perspective on love. Well, sometimes if you love somebody, you have to meet them halfway. As she keeps explaining how she feels, Ferb notices a flower shop and decides to present Vanessa with the symbol of his affection for her. But when he leaves, Doofenshmirtz arrives with Perry and Major Monogram. Her father explains the trouble he had went through to find her and rejoin with her, so Vanessa decides to follow Ferb's advice and go with him, since he put in the effort to be with her. When Ferb returns with the rose, she was gone, to his dismay. But he could take comfort knowing he had helped his friend. Vanessa and Ferb were creating an actual bond through their encounters, but this moment wouldn't be the time Ferb could show how much he thought of her. At the very least, Ferb did get the data they needed to go home, and after regrouping with his friends, Phineas is shocked Vanessa left him. A boy, a girl, alone in the city of love? I thought romance was a foregone conclusion. Although Vanessa and Ferb were many years off from the romantic life Phineas described, the growing friendship between them is showcased again in the big musical number Carpe Diem at the end of the roller coaster musical when Vanessa is invited to come and dance with Ferb. And when Vanessa is excited to see Ferb when her father's latest innator is wrecking havoc on the tri-state area by creating zombies. Candace? Phineas! Candace! Isabella! Ferb! Luckily, through the heroic action of Phineas, Ferb, Vanessa, and the rest of their pals, they are able to stop Dr. Doof's crazy zombie-making machine, which impresses Vanessa again. Great shot, Ferb! But even though Ferb and Vanessa had a connection building up between them, it was far from romantic, and Ferb was completely fine with that. Ferb didn't get in the way of Vanessa being with people that weren't him. Ferb was just more focused on Vanessa being happy than his own infatuation of her, which is why he's totally fine with helping Vanessa throw a Druselstein Halloween party complete with Ferb singing a love song for Vanessa and her boyfriend at the time. Ferb wanted Vanessa to like him and think fondly of him, but he wasn't trying to compete for her. He just stayed the kind, patient gentleman he always was, which eventually allowed Ferb to finally have a shot with his dream girl. 10 years after one of Phineas and Ferb's most epic summer vacations when Ferb is about to go to college, we see Vanessa roll up to pick up Ferb in a yellow sports car and they share a kiss that's a lot different than the first one Ferb got. Vanessa says hello to Phineas as well, indicating she's truly become close with everyone in Ferb's life. And it turns out Ferb is bringing her on a hot date. Ferb's taking me out for Ukrainian food. Ferb was in love with Vanessa from the start, but that infatuation and those fantasy trance sequences were replaced by something much more real. Even though at first Vanessa didn't think much of Ferb, they eventually came to often save each other from danger, open up about their feelings, and help and support one another in whatever situation they were in, even if that meant they were helping the other be with someone else. Both of them were responsible and had good intentions when they were with one another. So when they both grew up, their age gap decreased in meaning and they became even closer. The friendship they formed became romantic. But now I'd love to hear your thoughts. Were you happy that Ferb and Vanessa were shown to eventually end up together? Let me know in the comments along with any other ideas you have for future Phineas and Ferb videos. Through my excitement for Tangled the series, I've been fixating on Disney Channel a lot recently, which is why I've been realizing that Phineas and Ferb would be an extremely fun canon to explore more. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, such as my next video, which will be the complete backstory of Dr. Doofenshmirtz, make sure to subscribe and to click the beautiful 
beautiful bell if you're new. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Watso Videos so we can keep having more magical discussions all of the time. And thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. Finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.